Okay, team, we have a great problem ahead of us. It's from the Science of Teaching Reading Exam, the 293. It's a juicy question, all right? So what I want you to do is I want you to take, let's say, two to three minutes and read it to yourself. Now, we can, if we just glance at the picture real quick, let me clear, clear off this. If we just glance at the picture, so don't even, maybe don't even look at that for a moment. Just, just look at the picture here. It says, target word from the text student reads. So what that means is that there were some words, and I'll just write down letters, that the teach, that the student took and they read out loud. They turned them into sounds. Is that right? So they are going, they're doing a decoding, some type of decoding assessment. Is that right? So I haven't read the, we're going to have to read the assessment to find out if these words were in isolation or uh, if these words were in a story itself. But, but right now, these are the target words. Okay, and this is the students decoding of them. And we're probably going to look to see where they went wrong. So let's just take a moment now and let's just analyze, you know, um, if there's any uh, miscues in their decoding, right? So let's see. Here's the word lift. They got the word lift. And I guess this has a blend. I'll just put smiley face. Here's the word uh, uh, quilt. And they said quit. Uh-oh, uh, frowny town there. Frowny town with LT. Uh, that is a L and a T. Uh, and that is a that is another blend. So hmm, they got one right, one wrong. 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the word twist. And they say uh, twit. Okay, so that okay, so we got another blend is wrong. Okay, so right now we have two blends. I'll put down frowny town on some blends here, right? Just looking here, I see the uh, LT in uh, quit, uh, uh, sorry, quilt, I did it, uh, quilt, and the uh, ST in uh, twist. Okay, uh, how about this one right here? The word is flap, and they say flap, they got it, good. All right, how about uh, left, and they say left. Okay, so that is uh, FT. And uh, I guess that's the same as, uh, so they, so that's interesting. They got it right here and they got it wrong here. So I guess I have to put it on the list. All right, so what are you seeing right now with all these words um, in uh, uh, the LT, the ST, the FT? I think you're seeing a pattern now. I think we already established there's that clear pattern in blends, yes? Let me clear this off because what I did wasn't very clear. I'm just going to circle the miscues. Um, there's a that's wrong. Uh, that's wrong. There's a mistake there. There's something going on there. That's not correct. All right. And let's just see. These all happen to be blends. Yes. We have the LT, ST. Um, we have a uh, uh, an FT. We have a uh, ST is already accounted for. We have an NK. So clearly we have three blends. Now look, I know we didn't do, we didn't uh, read this question, but I have a feeling it's going to be about consonant blends. Is that fair? All right. Okay, fine. All right. Now you got to take two minutes <laughs> and read this to yourself. This is just the prompt. Remember, this is just the prompt. And then we have we have some questions, okay? But just for fun, uh, let's read this about uh, uh, constant blends. Two minutes on your own. Just read the prompt on your own. Go. Pause me, and then let's stop. Unpause. Unpause. Okay. First grade. So we're we're getting more advanced with phonics. And as we progress, it makes sense that some of the phonics is going to get a little bit more advanced. Okay. Uh, all right. And the teacher, what is the teacher doing for this first grader? They're working on phonics, letter sound correspondence. They notice how they mentioned phonics several times. Phonics, phonics, We've got some phonics going on, decodable text, right? Uh, phonics skills. I mean, this is clearly a phonics activity, yes? See, you can get to that. If you just looked at the picture and saw that these are the words in the text and this is the student's reading, 
you would have been able to see this is a phonics decoding activity, right? And and that should have been that you could have got that just from the picture. Uh, but but if you read the question, you clearly get that they're doing a, some type of assessment. Now, this is the new piece of information that I wasn't so sure of, but it, they're saying they're doing a 10 word oral reading assessment. So what that means is they're taking these words out of the text and putting them in a, and, and the student is reading them in isolation. So that means whenever a student is reading words in isolation, it means that there's no context clues that they could be using. So this isn't like a, a list of words that the teacher was checking to see that they were reading them correctly in context. No, this is a list of words that the teacher took out of the story, put them in an assessment and had the, had the student read out loud out of context. So these types of assessments, they just measure the student's phonics. Whenever we take words out of context, it's just measuring the student's use of phonics and phonics generalization patterns to decode words. So we can see uh, strengths and weaknesses by looking at this. Okay, so the data of one of the students is shown below. We've already analyzed this data and we've identified the student is having difficulty with constant blends. Agreed? Okay, so let's now go to the question. Everyone take one minute, uh, read this question. Go ahead. This question is going to have, there are going to be several questions in this uh, setup. So uh, this is just the first of, I think, two or three questions about this particular setup. Okay, so yes, we did observe that there were some issues here with some blends going on. Okay, so there's definitely some consonant blend issues. Uh, but let's just, uh, let's just see here. The teacher uses the assessment, this data, this informal assessment, that's used to gather information to guide instruction. They use this scenario in which of the following assessment purposes. So I use the word informal assessment. An informal assessment is like a like a, a quiz like this or an assessment where you do words in isolation. And informal assessments are used to gather information about the student to plan lessons and instruction. Okay. So is it a monitor the student's progress towards mastery of a reading skill? That's actually the answer. In this assessment of pulling out those 10 words, the teacher is using this assessment to monitor their growth and to see if they're mastering a specific skill. In this case, they're testing to see if they have blends. And based on the assessment, it looks like not yet. So that's just that that's just the generic use right now. They're doing this assessment to monitor, uh, check for growth or progress. And the assessment is showing that in this particular phonics skill, the student has hasn't mastered it. Now it's not these other things. Establishing the student's baseline performance with respect to a reading skill uh, to be taught. Okay, uh, not necessarily because they're they're not, um, it's not like they, they did any reading comprehension thing. There's no reading comprehension thing. Um, so it's not a reading skill. Let me circle this phrase, reading skill, reading skill, reading skill. Um, if I were to have read that reading skill, I might think it's a comprehension thing because um, I'm thinking reading skill and reading comprehension. But, but in this case right here, um, it just looks like it's a pure assessment. And so pure assessments are gathering information to guide instruction. In this case, the gathering would help that teacher measure the student's progress. And then from this, from, from the outcome would be, we got to work on this. So it's not this, uh, determine whether the student has achieved grade level reading skills. An assessment like that is, has multi is multifaceted. So what we're looking at here might be one component of a grade level reading test, right? There probably is an oral reading uh, portion to it. There's probably a vocabulary portion to it. There's probably a comprehension portion to it. And reading words in isolation would just be one small portion of that type of uh, overall assessment. So, so this isn't, that's not the purpose. This is maybe part of that assessment, but it's not, um, it would only be a small part of an assessment that's uh, measuring uh, if they've achieved grade level reading, right? So that's that. Compare students' growth res with respect to uh, reading skills before and after instruction. So comparing students, 
you need a very special um, assessment for that to compare student to student. You want that to be more norm referenced. And so in this case right here, this is not a norm referenced assessment. We're not really, we're not gonna be using this to compare, you know, cause the comparing would in, involve multi, a lot of different, a, a lot more facets you'd be looking into. Okay, so no, we're not comparing students. Cross that out. Okay, so in a very generic way, A is correct because all A is saying is this is some this is an assessment. I wonder if this when this was done. When was this done? Does it say after providing instruction and guided practice on the skill, they do this test? Okay, so it doesn't say in the beginning, middle, and year. So they've already done the instruction. They've already done guided practice. Now they see how the student did. So, so really right now, this is really monitoring if they, if they mastered the skill or not. Did they learn it or not? So that's the goal. That would be the goal based on that scenario. All these others wouldn't quite match up. This is a great question team. The answer is A. This is from that test. Uh, let me pull it out. This is from that test here. The answer is A on the science of teaching reading test. I love it. Now, I know if you're in Texas right now, you're like, uh, we hate this test, Chris. We hate the science of teaching reading test. I hear you. I hear you. But for someone who's been doing a lot of reading exams for a long time, they, they, they've given you some solid. They've given you a solid question. And guess what? If you're looking at this for the first time, you got a nice solid answer. Maybe a little wordy. But uh, the Science of Teaching and Reading does give you some solid explanation, so you might want to check that out. Uh, this one is A, and I get it. It's a little harder. It's a little wordier. That's why we do some of these harder questions, okay? We do some easy ones. We do some mid-level ones, and we do some harder ones, okay? And that, that makes it better, okay? All right, the answer to this one is A, and let's keep going. 